So Penn State will serve first in one of those middles that we talked about, Serena Gray, she will step back to serve first, a spot in the regional final against Nebraska on the line. And Logan Eggleston will get the first swing and the kill for Texas, the Big 12 Player of the Year. Absolutely, pass and kill by Eggleston. And when you go through the entire Open without mentioning the Big 12 Player of the Year, you know Texas is pretty deep because they've got Eggleston out at the left pin and she is a fantastic left side. And there's Asia O'Neill in the middle, the other middle for Texas, making her presence felt with that stuff. Texas comes into this match after a sweep of Wright State in the second round. They tied a season high in that match with 15 blocks. Wright State just had two blocks. Looks like Kudryashova is going to get a touch there off that Texas block, so it is going to be a point for Penn State, and that's a really important point for Penn State because we talked about the fact that there's a big premium on ball control because of the fact that their middles are two of their best offensive players. Doesn't sometimes play to the out-of-system game very well, so Penn State needs to stay in system in order to get the ball to their middles. And everybody was wondering, Missy, what Penn State would look like coming into this tournament before they played on Thursday in the second round. It had been 26 days since their last match. They had their last two doubleheaders canceled in the Big Ten portion of their schedule due to COVID-related issues. And they were able to get a big win over North Carolina a and who was making its first appearance in the tournament. Coach Rose said we're not nearly as good of a team as we were prior to the pause. But he said we've got a couple days here to get better. So they are still working this late into the season. When you mentioned, mentioned those cancellations they had late in the season, Courtney, those weren't just any cancellations. Those were matches against Wisconsin and Nebraska, two very good teams. And they would have learned a whole lot about themselves had they been able to play those matches. And it's affected their practices. They haven't been able to practice as a full team for very many practices. And there's Texas with its block. Meanwhile, Texas has played that Big 12 schedule, which was a full schedule in the fall. And then more matches here in the spring for Jarrett Elliott's crew to get ready for this tournament. Yeah, very different situations in terms of the fact that the Big Ten did not play at all in the fall, and the Big 12 actually determined their conference winner in the fall and then extended their season into the spring. So Texas has been playing a whole lot of volleyball. In fact, so much so that they've really had to depend on their sports science staff to monitor their players. And they rolled out one a point for Penn State. It was a great dig by Morgan O'Brien, the libero for Texas, number 16 in that black jersey. But point Penn State is Jenna Hampton, the libero for Penn State, steps back to serve. And a swing on the left side. It is Skyler Field, so has moved around the front row this year. This team is just absolutely loaded. You look down their starting lineup and it's first team Big 12 player after first team Big 12 player. Skylar Fields being one of those. As you mentioned, she primarily swung from the right pin a season ago, making the adjustment to the left side. And the biggest thing there is learning to handle balls out of system. I'd say she's learned it pretty well. Yeah, not too bad for Skylar Fields, averaging over three kills a set at another point for Texas. I mean, it makes them so dangerous. Texas has so many weapons, and like we just talked about, they can plug and play people at different spots. Coach Elliott said to us prior to this one, Courtney, we are balanced in every position. He really felt like their advantage in this matchup as they went against Penn State was the fact that they should be able to score points in every rotation. That is how balanced they are offensively. Texas says the service error goes long. Texas won its fourth straight Big 12 championship. They played Baylor four times in this crazy season that the Big 12 has put together, but they beat them every single time. Skyler Fields again. 
She is so incredibly physical, a whip of an arm, so fast. She really creates matchup problems for any team. And right now, a huge matchup problem for Penn State is Gabby Blossom, their setter at only five foot nine, is in the front row trying to block her. Jenna Gabriel on the serve, the setter for Texas. Blossom pushes it to the outside of the freshman, Annie Kate Fitzpatrick. Fields will get a swing off, and nobody was back there. Wow, beautiful out of system play. Jenna Gabriel goes beyond the chairs to make a play on this one, but look how in control she is. She doesn't just take a, a crazy swing at it. She brings it back to the middle of the court, allowing Morgan O'Brien to get us to put up a ball that they can get a swing out of that out of system play. Really well done. Johnny Parker on the left pin. And Jarney Parker will terminate. She is their kills leader from the right side. 3.1 kills per set, a two-time All-American. You know, I said we went through the Open without mentioning Logan Eggleston of Texas. Well, we went through the Open without mentioning Johnny Parker of Penn State. And they are sort of the, the counterpart of one another, the go-to players. So much pop on the ball. They do so much for these teams in all six rotations. And an ace for Annie Kate Fitzpatrick. She had an amazing service run in that North Carolina A&T match. They scored nine straight points off her serve, and Rust Rose is trying to get her to be more consistent there. I'd say that was pretty consistent. Such a young player, but plays with a whole lot of passion. And remember, this is a Penn State team who really relied on the energy of Kendall White, their libero, a year ago. And I feel like Amy Kate Fitzpatrick has that emotional um, ability to step in and provide so much energy for this team. She's looking to really fill those shoes. Yeah, Russ Rose told us he didn't think they realized how much they were going to miss Kendall White. Obviously, she was an amazing libero, a three-time All-American, a two-time Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, and the Penn State career digs record holder. But they missed her talking and her energy on the court. They have missed that th this season and have been trying to find it. Good layout by O'Brien. Molly Phillips. Gabriel to Butler. In transition here, this is beautiful. You literally see Gabriel take her eyes off the ball, and she makes eye contact right there with Breon Butler. Let me see where you are. Let me make sure I know where you're going. I mean, just absolutely beautiful transition play, and you see how comfortable they are setting the middle, Texas. And that's what we talked about coming into this one. How much offense can these two teams get out of the middle? That's great middle play right there by Texas. A leaping Johnny Parker coming out of middle back. I'll tell you what, Johnny Parker carries a huge load for this Nebraska team because of the fact that they're not as experienced on the left side. They really rely on her to swing at some out of system balls from the right antenna and then across the across the backcourt as well. She is a great and fierce competitor. Gabriel dishes it up for Eggleston. Take two. And Eggleston pushes it down the line. Texas is perfect. No attacking errors so far. And I like the choice by Jenna Gabriel. I have to admit, I expected her to reverse flow and not go back to Eggleston. I was waiting for the set behind. Well, guess what? I think that's what Penn State expected, too. And she saw the middle blocker going that way. Not only does she go back to Eggleston, but she puts some pace on that second set and allows Eggleston to come through quickly. Caitlin Hoard with a good connection there for Gabby Blossom. Caitlin Hoard, one of those two junior middle blockers for Penn State. She is so much fun to watch. She just really thumps the ball, gets up so high, sort of hangs there in the air. She is just a unique talent. Hitting 419 on the season. Wow, we talked about Texas's balance. They now have three players with more than one kill. They are spreading it out. We're early on in this set. That's why that's so impressive is that the distribution has been pretty even. Yeah, Jenna Gabriel has this team hitting 6-15 right now. Oh, what an up!
and Asia O'Neal finishes it. This is some hustle and some effort. The pancake and then Morgan O'Brien, my goodness. And this is not by chance. Texas has always been big and physical, but hasn't necessarily been known for being a scrappy defensive team. And Asia O'Neal said, coming into this tournament, we've put a lot of focus on our defense. We want to be that team that's gritty. We want to be that team that makes second and third efforts defensively. And we're really seeing that right now from Texas. Yeah, and they wanted to add, they already had that blocking presence as part mm -hmm. of their defense. I mean, they're sixth in the nation in blocks per set, but it was adding the other things, like Jenna Gabriel diving on the floor for that pancake and getting it up and over. And I think you could hear Jenna Gabriel there saying that she was tripped under the net. So those feet get tight under that center net when everybody's flying at it. There's an ace for Penn State. Maddie Bilinovic and Russ Rose said coming into this match, she is resilient because he said, I'm surprised she's here. I'm very hard on her all the time. And she still comes to work every single day and it has impressed him. And I think along with Annie Kate Fitzpatrick, another player in that freshman class who has that way about her of being vocal in a good way, bringing a voice to the court to help fill that void as Kendall White graduated a season go, and you know how vocal she was for Penn State. Yeah, she was so much fun to watch the Libero position. I mean, you could hear her in the parking lot yelling out things to her team. It was awesome, yeah. the energy she brought. <laughs> Service error for Eggleston. Playing to 25, of course, in the first four sets. You have to win by two. It is best three out of five. Winner is moving on to the regional final to face Nebraska tomorrow. The kick save by Jenna Gabriel. Yes, that is legal. Wow. Can Texas finish it, though, and get a point? Here comes Parker. No. Johnny Parker puts it away. But, yeah, that was a great save. And the reaction from her teammates, Courtney, makes me think that she does this on the regular. Because, look, no one looks at all surprised by this. They're just like, oh, yeah, here we go. Third contact. Send it on over. Now, all credit to Penn State for staying with this one and going ahead and using that free ball to their advantage as they transition there. Overpass, and Penn State wins the joust at the net. It's a five to one run now for the Nittany Lions. Serena Gray there, 16 in blue for Penn State. One of the many players on this team who really has been affected by the stop and go of COVID and being in and out. And, um, you know, I think her best volleyball is ahead, like perhaps right here in this tournament as she's finally maybe able to get her feet under her and put together some consistent matches. And she's already really good. So, you know, you can imagine the sky is the limit for Serena Gray. Texas gets a point to end the run, and the Longhorns the first to 15 here in the opening set. Winner moving on to the regional final to face Nebraska. Texas on top of Penn State here in set number one. Series history between these two teams. Yeah, they have a pretty rich history, especially here in the NCAA tournament. Penn State leads the all-time series. The Nittany Lions have won 11 of the last 13 matches. We saw these two teams face off back in that 2009 national championship match. It was Penn State coming out on top with the win. Of course, Texas went on a few years later to win a national championship in 2012. I asked Coach Elliott, I said, do you think these young players understand the significance of this matchup because of the history, the volleyball history between these two? And he said, oh, yeah, I think they're pretty aware. There were probably middle schoolers watching us go for that national title back in 2009. And he said, realize we go after the same players in recruiting. So we're not just competing on the floor. It's, it's a constant recruiting battle in the years that they're not competing out on the floor. Yeah, very familiar with each other, even though they don't play in the same conference. And Skylar Fields will terminate as Texas got a much better pass on that ball. Oh, 
Oh, Texas got that out of the net. They'll try Johnny Parker. And Fields took just enough off of it. And as a left side player, you're seeing Fields really start to learn how to work the court. Look at this sharp angle as she just cuts her wrist away and takes advantage of that sharp angle shot. She's the freshman of the year, a season ago in the Big 12, but realized swinging from the right side. So she's made a big adjustment this year and she just continues to get better. Made a, the all Big 12 first team. Jenna Gabriel saves that one out of the net. I love the way she plays those second contact balls. Doesn't give up on anything. Jenna Gabriel has improved her game a lot, too. It was a lot of extra time in the gym, 20 to 30 minute sessions every day outside of their normal practice time to get her up to where they needed her, be and her to be. And you can see a difference. Yeah, you can already see from this match just how athletic she is in some of the defensive plays she's made, but she's spent that time in the gym working on the technical side of setting, the footwork, the hands, and all that goes into that position. Of course, a lot of decision-making. And setting Breon Butler in the middle is always a pretty good decision as far as I'm concerned. Penn State will win that point. Serena Gray. Look at this, I think Fields is expecting to pop one right over the top of the block there, and Serena Gray's not having any of that. Look at the hang time. And you love to see her teammates get excited for her, trying to work back and get to back to where she has been this some time this season due to COVID issues. Easy point for Texas. That's a hard one because if you're Penn State, you understand the importance of trying to get a swing on the ball. Texas is just too good to pass free balls over the net. They're gonna convert those. But wow, you certainly wanna give your defense a second chance, especially when they're playing like they are right now. Jenna Hampton back there, absolutely digging balls up out of left back. Two point game going to 25. Nalani Yosia behind the service line for the Longhorns. Coming off a of one foot, and Serena Gray is denied. This might be one of the most intimidating blocks in college volleyball. Breon Butler alongside Logan Eggleston. Wow, that's a wall. Not an easy path around that. That's 6-2 and 6-4. Johnny Parker from the back row. And that is exactly why you see Gabby Blossom there. Go to the back row attack. Let's give ourselves some room to swing against this big Texas block. The back row attack is a really good choice, especially when you got Johnny Parker back there. Penn State will make a serving sub. They'll bring in Keaton Broughton, the West Virginia transfer in place of Serena Gray behind the service line. And Brighton lays out for it. Breon Butler serving up that three ball with a little spice. Absolutely thumps this. Look at the transition play out of the back row using the overhand pass to make it happen quickly. And just a one on one opportunity there that Breon Butler is able to capitalize on. And Penn State has called timeout as Texas is the first to 20. They are hitting 480 in this set, Missy. Just two attacking errors for Texas right now. Skyler Fields with five kills on only one error is hitting 571 from the left pin. You'd be thrilled to see that number out of a middle blocker, but on seven attempts for Skyler Fields to be hitting 571, you're seeing just how physical and how well-rounded these Longhorns are. Well, we're excited to be covering this NCAA championship. For more information on the NCAA championships, you can go to NCAA.com, your official online home for all 90 championships. Winner of this match will move on to face Nebraska 
who had a really nice match just moments ago. Mm -hmm. They were able to move on with a win over Baylor, who was the number one overall seed last season in this tournament. This is how our portion of the bracket looks. We're in the bottom left corner of the bracket, if you're looking at it. Wisconsin advanced yesterday with a win over BYU. Now we're waiting to see if Penn State or Texas will be the one to move on. In this round of 16, all six Big Ten teams made it into this round. Wisconsin and Nebraska, of course, have already punched their tickets to the regional finals. And Pitt, the first team to take down a Big Ten team in this tournament, and Pitt just recently took out Minnesota, the overall number three seed. And of course, Texas trying to be the second team here to take out a Big Ten team. Johnny Parker and Skyler Fields with hitting over 500 in this match early on. Service ace for Texas. Morgan O'Brien, the transfer from Illinois, is for the first time facing a Big Ten opponent. And so she may be more familiar than anybody on this Texas team with Penn State and steps back and serves an ace. She has been a really nice addition to this Longhorn team. Yeah, what a luxury to have someone like her come in and win that Libero job. It was touch point Nittany Lions. Anastasia Kudryashova. Kudryashova in negative numbers prior to that swing is working her way out. Now two kills along with two errors on her four attempts. And Jenna Gabriel is in the back row, so she can't go up and get that ball. Becomes a back row attacker. Obviously, that's not her intent, but because of the tight pass, and she played it over above the height of the net, so she is called for the back row attack. And that's what Texas can do, and they have a good pass that's not too tight to the net. Jenny Gabriel does a really nice job of going up and making a play on that ball. Again, it's passed fairly tight to the net, but you actually want the ball to be fairly tight. You want it to be right up there where she can go up and make a play and draw the blocker in, and she just does a super nice job of that and keeping her middles involved. Short serve from Sydney Peterson. Doesn't bother Penn State. That was Parker. And interestingly, Jenna Gabriel had exited the floor there just momentarily for Texas. They take their setter off the court, go with an absolute defensive sub, trying to see if they can get a block by Cabello up there in the front row. She's actually also a setter, so they do have hands on the floor. But they make that sub, trying to get a taller block up there, and then Gabriel right back into the match, as you see her here. So a little bit of basketball play, the offensive defensive sub coming into action. Yeah, that's something we saw Texas do last season, too. They felt confident in their DSs to be able to set, mm -hmm. bring in a DS setter in the back row. Penn State just one point away. Texas has got to call timeout because Penn State right on their heels. And you saw Jared Elliott shaking his head there. A couple Texas errors, and they've sort of opened the door to allow Penn State right back in. I think I like the choice of Texas challenging that left side block for Penn State. They've got Annie Kate Fitzpatrick, who you could say is a little undersized at 5'11", but on top of that, she's a freshman up there at the left pin with a lot of offensive load on her shoulders. Challenge her as a blocker, and Texas misses just wide. Yeah, so Texas has to call time out here. We've seen later in this set their their passing has gotten a little shaky. Penn State has been able to take advantage of that. And when you're Penn State, you've got Johnny Parker. They're going to her right now. Eight kills hitting 583. Yeah, Johnny Parker has been an absolute rock star, and she has so much experience. There she is, nine in blue. As you see her there for Penn State, she has so much experience for the Nittany Lions. She's been in a lot of big matches, been called on to come through in big moments in those big matches. And so not only is she really an emotional leader for this team, but her play is leading the way right now. And we've seen her, them 
Penn State will set her on the left pin, on the right pin, out of the back row, make just a versatile game that Johnny Parker brings, one of the captains on this Penn State team. Penn State trailing by one. We're playing to 25 here in the opening set. You have to win by two. Bilinovic serving. Huge up from Peterson. Parker, it's wide, Point Texas. Oh, just wide for Johnny Parker. I was gonna say, Penn State had done a really nice job of slowing down Eggleston. And it's Johnny Parker up there on the right side who's getting those block touches, trying to convert those block touches into offense, and it's a just miss for Johnny Parker. Now Eggleston on the serve. She had a service error last time behind the line. She's a dangerous server. They should be glad that she had an error because she's second in the nation with 41 total aces on the season. So she can be dangerous from the service line. Obviously with that, there's gonna be some risk. So Penn State is gonna challenge this call. The original call was that the ball was out. Kevin Wendelbo is our R2. He will go over to the monitor and look. This is the first challenge used by Penn State. They will have two challenges remaining. And I don't know if I can think of a weightier moment in a match, Courtney, than set one with the score this tight, because you and I both know how set one can really set the tone of a match. And so this is just an absolutely huge challenge right here. Yeah, so there's a look at the touch. Remember, they can look at anything in this rally if there was a touch or if it was in or out. It was originally called out. And of course, there could have been a touch at the net with the blocker. There could have been a touch in the back court with the defender. And then the final thing is, was the ball just in bounds? The ball lands on any part of that white line and it's considered inbounds. To me, this is the most difficult call for the line judge when a ball is hit right at you, because of course it's your natural instinct to flinch a little, move back, and it makes it really difficult to make a call on the ball. So it was in. It will be Penn State point. And I, can, I think Coach Elliott wants to know, what was it? Was it in? Was there a touch? What's the call? I think from that last angle that our crew showed you, that was the angle that you could really mm -hmm. see that the ball was in on that lighter part of the court. And Penn State will have two challenges remaining unless we go to a fifth set. Each team will get an additional challenge. Sure was good use of his first challenge though. Rather than 23-21 Texas, we're tied at 22. First time we have been tied in this set. Penn State looking for its first lead. A little slow down in the game here can obviously be frustrating for the players, but I'll tell you what, I'll take the challenge system any day over the fact that it slows the game down because I think what everyone wants is for the call to be right. When it, it matches is this important. And so, so glad that we had the challenge system in play. I think they're double checking rotations and alignment because Texas had made a sub after that challenge. Texas is hitting 379 in this opening set, but Penn State later in this set has found its rhythm and really started to look good. And that's why we've got a tie set. Oh. 
a kneel off of one foot. And it just looks like she's climbing a ladder. She goes to the next level, doesn't she? As she goes behind, she elevates, and then it's like just a few more steps up in the air before she makes contact with the ball. Absolutely beautiful. Forward in the middle. Skyler Fields blocked. Tied at 23. Ford not quite able to convert on the swing, but does a nice job of closing. And still, I think it's Johnny Parker, though, that's the one that gets all of that. And what a match Johnny Parker is having right now. The junior. She was actually a second team All Big Ten selection this year, has been first team for them in the past. And we mentioned how Penn State's players have been so affected by the stop and go of the season. Fitzpatrick off the block, and Penn State not only is in the lead, they have set point. Annie Kate Fitzpatrick there, two in blue, only five foot 11. That is an undersized outside in today's game, and she comes through with a huge, huge swing. Texas calls timeout. Well, for the 42nd straight year, the NFL Draft is on ESPN. It's also on the NFL Network, and the Game Day crew will be on ABC again this year, covering it from the college perspective. It all comes to you Thursday, April 29th through May 1st, with all three days on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. Tell you what, never count Penn State out. This is a team who plays so incredibly hard, and I love the way they've fought through this first set. I feel like they've turned defense into offense. They have played hard enough defensively to extend rallies, to convert digs, to give themselves second and third swings. This might not be the best offensive team that we've ever seen from Penn State, but what they're doing right now is extending rallies, giving themselves a chance to put themselves in the best position. And right now, the best position is the ball in Johnny Parker's hands. There she is right there. What a day she is having. Nine kills. We're in set one, by the way. Nine kills on 14 swings, hitting 571. Yeah, and Parker has just been impressive. They have set her all over the court. Absolutely, we've seen, them, we've seen them use her out of the back row. She naturally swings from the right side, but in serve receive, they're not afraid to give her the ball on the left side either. And she has been a big part of their success because of the block touches at the net, specifically against Logan Eggleston, the Big 12 player of the year, getting some big time block touches to slow those balls down. Yeah, Eggleston just two kills on the other side of the net against Johnny Parker. It is set point Penn State. We knew the middles would have a big impact in this one, and it's Serena Gray out of the middle for Penn State who gives the Nittany Lions set point in set one. Penn State rallies. They work so hard to get back in this opening set, and it will be a big time block from the Nittany Lions to get the job done. They take the opening set 25-23. Penn State rallies and takes the opening set from Texas 25-23. Courtney Lyle and Missy Whittemore excited to be with you. We've already had a great start to this match. Penn State comes in. It's been a crazy season for the Nittany Lions. They had a 26-day break from their last match to their first match in the NCAA tournament. Went 9-5 in the Big Ten this season. Yeah, and if you're taking a look at that, as I think many people did when they saw the bracket and thought, wow, at nine and five, Penn State gets the overall number 13 seed. How did that happen? They just showed you exactly how that happened because coaches understand how good the Big Ten is, how good this Penn State team is in a season of stop and go where so many teams were affected by the absence of players or not just maybe in matches, but in practice. Penn State certainly one of those, but we know that this is a very talented Penn State team. In fact, Coach Rose, 
Cruz addressed that to some extent when he said, you know, we know Texas has played significantly more matches than us, but he felt like they had played matches that were significant in terms of the level of competition, not just at the start, but from beginning to end, that they had been in matches where you had to maintain a high level of play from the get-go until the final serve. Penn State is one of those five Big Ten teams remaining. We saw Minnesota eliminated. Six teams from the Big Ten made the tournament. They all made it to this round of 16. Minnesota eliminated in five sets earlier today by Pitt. Wisconsin and Nebraska have already punched their ticket to the next round, and Penn State with a pretty good start. And, Missy, I was kind of interested to see chemistry-wise, flow-wise, how would Penn State look in this match against a tough Texas team and I think they looked pretty in sync I really thought they did too and I think they look hungry absolutely hungry which you know you never know how you're going to come off of a delay right are you going to just look completely out of system or are you going to look like wow we have been waiting so long to play and I felt like this Penn State team played hungry which is what I really like to see now realize as we go back to Texas this is a Texas team who won the Big 12 prior to Christmas played their entire Big 12 schedule in the fall it has been a long season and I'm sure coach Elliott is saying we got to dig deep here guys we made it this far we're not quitting yet Penn State has won 18 straight sets can they keep that going set number two good start Caitlin Horde in the middle and really the challenge for the Penn State setter here Gabby Blossom is to set her middles high enough that sounds like a funny challenge but they are so athletic they jump so well that as a setter you can be a little nervous about overshooting them and yet these two players Horde and Serena Gray just play at another level they're so high above the net and so you have to really trust that connection and you have to be willing to shoot the ball up there and let them get the most out of their physicality and it helps too this is the second full season that gabby blossom has been that full-time setter so she is used to that connection now even with the starts and stops she's got that experience from an entire season last year with them not a good pass by logan eggleston there but that's okay she comes back and cleans it up with a nice high swing off the block penn state's block did a great job on logan eggleston not much you can do with that. Eggleston tacking on another point for Texas. And we're seeing the impact the service line can have. Just moments ago, Eggleston, not such a good pass, is able to save her team. And now it's Penn State with a not so good pass here that's going to turn into a Texas point. No attacking errors for Eggleston. Blossom laid out for it. Back to Eggleston. You got to feed your hitter when she's hot. Absolutely, and in the big moments, you know Eggleston is going to come through. The play that we've seen from Johnny Parker, the veteran for Penn State. I think we're going to see Eggleston work her way here in set two and match that. Johnny Parker does respond. This is such a great battle between Parker and Eggleston because they're both fantastic outside hitters, but because they swing from opposite pins, they also have the matchup in terms of blocking one another. So these two are just battling right now. Parker, the only player in double figure kills in this match with 10 hitting 600. An ace for Penn State. And as we have said, Texas so big, so physical, but do they have the ball control to get the most out of that? And that is where Penn State is going to challenge them. They know they have to make it happen from the service line. They have to challenge the ball control to take away that physicality factor. Service error for Penn State. The Nittany Lions in that first set trailed 22 to 19, ended it on a six to one run to take the opening set by two. And down the line. What a save by Hampton! Asia O'Neill terminates on the slide. 
So, so good on the slide, Asia O'Neill, and it just really completes the offense for Texas. It allows them to go from antenna to antenna, but look at the defensive hustle. This is what won set one for Penn State, turning defense into offense. That time, Texas does a great job of capitalizing on the free ball. And then that Texas block says hello to Johnny Parker. Back and forth we go as Eggleston and Parker continue to try to one-up one another. Eggleston again. So much more success in this set for Eggleston. What's changed? Yeah, we, I was just going to say, we mentioned that she had a slow start. Now six kills without an error, hitting 462. She has come alive. I think she's found her high swing going high off the block. I think she was hitting into the block a little bit earlier, allowing that block touch to sort of affect her swing. But the, the block has challenged her, and she's responded. She's realized, oh, wait a minute. This is Penn State. We're in the round of 16 now. I got to bring out my A game. I got to get my high swing. And Johnny Parker's got her A game too. Just a beautiful shot down the line for her 11th kill. How about the control from Johnny Parker? She places that one straight down the line. Double digit kills and we're, we're not even halfway through set two, Courtney, crazy. It's that 529 hitting percentage. That'll really do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've had a lot of success with that right there, running Asia O'Neill behind the setter. Yeah, it's one of the things that it can be so hard to defend if you don't typically defend it every day in your gym. And there are few teams that do, you know, as we talked to Baylor about trying to defend the Stiverin slide of Nebraska. He said, well, we've had to face Asia O'Neill. So those two are kind of in a class of their own in terms of how well they're able uh, to execute the slide. service error from Eggleston. Johnny Parker serves from Penn State, and then the rotation for Texas takes Eggleston back to serve. So these two are just mirroring one another in the rotation. All three rotations across the front row, they're up there battling. And we're going to see some offense out of these two out of the backcourt as well. Yeah, both can be used on that back row attack. Fitzpatrick service error. It's been a whole lot asked out of Andy Kate Fitzpatrick as only a freshman. She's done a really nice job. You take a look at Logan Eggleston's numbers here today. Only two kills uh, in that first set and already four in this second set. And that hitting percentage has gone up to 800 in the second set. Sydney Peterson setting a beautiful ball to the outside to O'Neill. Yes, she did. This allows Texas to really stay in system. When you've got hands like that on the floor, realize she's not wearing the Libero jersey. She can set the ball in front of the 10-foot line. You're used to seeing those defensive players in front of the 10-foot line not use their hands, but not the case there. I know Skyler Fields on the swing. Texas on top, 11-5. Omaha, Nebraska is the hub for this year's NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. We started with 48 teams, now in the round of 16. One of these teams is moving on to face Nebraska in the regional final tomorrow. And Johnny Parker misses on that swing, but that has been a go-to option for Penn State. She has 11 kills in this match. The rest of the team has seven kills combined. 
Yeah, can't say I gain, uh, blame Gabby Blossom there for trying to find Johnny Parker out of the back row. She has certainly been the go-to. Service error by O'Neill. Four service errors for each team. It was touched. Skyler Field so hot in that first set. Sort of lost track of her a little bit here as set one went on and set two continued. But her offensive numbers are fantastic. Seven kills now on 12 swings, hitting 333. Kudria Shova. Kudria Shova is such a different player than Anne Kate Fitzpatrick, who plays opposite her at the left pin. And, you know, Coach Rose said what we need from Kudria Shova is her length. She gives them a long arm at the left side. She challenges the block up high, but she has to be really disciplined about swinging high over that block. Well, she has played in all positions across the front row, just like Skylar Fields, who got that kill for Texas. Kudria Shoba has played right side and middle, and they've moved her back to outside. She had a really nice skill set from her training back home in Russia. Wow, how about that offensive combo when you've got Brian Butler coming at you right in the middle, the blocker has to hold, and that gives Skylar Fields all sorts of room to swing. Those are the kind of plays, Courtney, that Penn State was able to make late in set one in order to come back and take that first set. It was the scrappy defensive plays, the running balls down. That's really what gave them second life. And Texas trying to match that style. Texas had a nice lead in that first set, and they were up 22 to 19 before Penn State rallied and won the opening set 25-23. tip couldn't get there in time and it's the tip play from Johnny Parker that's going to score here for Penn State but when Johnny Parker has been in the front row it's her block touches that are just impressing me so much she is slowing down that Texas swing just enough to allow her back court to get a transition dig that has been the difference for me is that block touch that we're getting from Johnny Parker and Serena Gray doing a great job blocking as well and you won't see that show up on a stat sheet, but it has made a big impact on this match for Penn State as Molly Phillips terminates. You are so right, Courtney, because when you look at a stat sheet and you see the blocking numbers, realize those are only blocks that end a point. Those are stuff blocks. All those block touches, all that jumping that a middle blocker puts in over the course of the match, that's not recorded on the stat sheet that we see. Now, don't be fooled. The coaches are very aware, and they're statting those block touches and the quality touches that they're blocking. Gets. Oh, and what is the call? A double contact call on Texas. And realize this is a judgment call, not something that Coach Elliott could challenge. Don't think he would challenge it with a six point cushion, quite honestly, at this point in the second set, but not even a choice. I don't know, Penn State has come back before. Yes, they have. <laughs> Gabriel pushes it to Eggleston. Great up from Hampton. <laughs> she had to work for it, but finally, Eggleston 
is going to finish this one off. You see their second tip shot in that rally as she pushes it deep into the court. Hats off to Jenna Hampton, who's made some fantastic defensive diving plays back there. But finally, the overpass, Eggleston gets a good clean look at it and puts it away. Seven kills, 4-12, hitting percentage. No errors, but her service errors are piling up. Yeah, and you feel like things have been a little sloppy from the service line in this one, but I think what you have to understand is maybe it speaks more to the fact of how important these players know that it is to put a, surf, a tough serve in play. They realize the level of competition across the net. They know that free balls aren't going to get it done. They can't put a lollipop serve over the net. They understand how important it is to put tough balls in play. It's Patrick with a power serve. Swipe down to the floor by Asia O'Neill, who's up to seven kills. Her hang time bodes well for her that time as she has to hang just a little bit. The connection not quite there on the slide, but as a setter, you're not afraid to throw it back there, not afraid to take some risks. When you're sending it to a player like Asia O'Neill, her athleticism, her hang time gives her a much bigger hitting window. If you have a player who has a small window in terms of the slide as a setter, you become hesitant. It's a blind set. You can't see behind your head. You become a little hesitant. But with Asia O'Neill, I would have all sorts of confidence about flinging one back there. she can do with that that's a hard ball to dig up by Johnny Parker Johnny Parker in their match against Rutgers hit several milestones they're just gonna tell you how good she is in her career she hit the 900 kill the 500 dig and the 200 block mark in that match against Rutgers and you're seeing right now what a well-rounded player she is what are the odds that happens all in the same match? Right, exactly. <laughs> <sighs> and that will be a double contact or a lift called on Penn State. And I agree, you got to call that one. It, but in defense of the setter there, Gabby Blossom, the pass just comes awkwardly off the platform and is sort of a line drive at her. She puts her hands up really to sort of defend herself. Not a lot she can do with that one. Texas hitting 632 in this set. Service error number six. And now it sort of feels like they're becoming contagious. I, I know that you realize you have to put a good serve in play, but I'll tell you, it can play with your mind a little when the player prior to you misses a serve and the play, player prior to that misses a serve. And, you know, so you do wonder, will it become a mind game? Jenna Gabriel there becoming a back row blocker. She is not playing across the front row in this rotation. And so with the tight pass, she goes up. And when she jumps and the ball is played off her hands, she becomes a back row blocker. But again, we're seeing Penn State challenge the ball control of Texas. And it's starting at the service line. And again, Penn State with the ace. That's their fourth ace, just down by four. And Texas has to call a timeout. It's a four-point right lead here. for Texas, but remember, the cushion was like that in the first set, and Penn State came back and won. Yeah, four-point lead all of a sudden doesn't feel like much when you see the momentum swinging Penn State's way the, the way it is right now, the way they're controlling things from the service line. Hot gets hotter back there at the service line, so this is a great timeout here for Texas. Well, this week's Sunday Night Baseball game is the series finale between the Braves and Javi Baez and the Cubs. Our coverage begins at 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app with baseball tonight. Sunday Night Countdown. Texas trying to even up this match. Winner gets Nebraska in the regional final tomorrow. This is the round where Texas lost in the tournament last year. Texas was the number two seed playing on its home floor and Louisville came in and beat Texas to move on to the regional final. It shocked everybody watching the tournament. 
And I tell you, it was the same situation for Pitt, who was playing at home in Cincinnati last year, upset Pitt in that second round. And guess what? Pitt has already avenged that second round loss as they earlier were the first team to take out a Big Ten team with their win over Minnesota. Their first time ever in a regional semifinal. They're winning it, and they're headed to the round of eight for the first time ever. But Texas would like nothing more than to avenge that early departure from the tournament a season ago, hoping that they can do that against Penn State. Johnny Parker on the right side with the roll shot. And Skyler Fields in this rotation swinging on that right pin. Yeah, interesting choice there that they go ahead and leave Skyler Fields at the right pin. And sometimes that's by design and sometimes it's just by way of the play that the players don't have an opportunity to make the switch. But I like the fact that Jenna Gabriel finds her there because as we know, she's a very good right side swinger. And moving over to the left pin this year for Texas. Bump set to Eggleston. And it's touched. Oh, it was in. I thought it might have been a little bit wide going on that sharp angle. And we've been bragging about how great Johnny Parker's block touches have been. Well, guess what? Johnny Parker gets stuck in left front. Eggleston has an opportunity to swing without Johnny Parker across the net from her, and she makes the most of that one. Texas block winning out Brian Butler and Molly Phillips over there. Penn State going for the tempo there, trying to set a fastball to the outside, hoping they can beat that big block. But the risk, of course, is if you set it too tight and the block is there, there's absolutely nowhere to go against these Longhorns. Timeout Penn State. Man, Missy, we have seen just a back and forth battle between Johnny Parker of Penn State and Logan Eggleston of Texas. Yeah, two of the best in the game and the matchup. We couldn't have asked for anything better than to have them mirroring one another across the net because not only are we seeing them take the big swings, but we're seeing how important the block touches are. Johnny Parker several times been able to slow down that swing of Eggleston, who was slow to start, but has certainly come alive here in set two. Now you take a look at their numbers. Eggleston still no attacking errors, even with the pressure that Johnny Parker's block has put on her. Both of these players hitting over 400. Yeah, really great job by Eggleston to maintain her composure when that when that block from Penn State is touching her, slowing her down, you know, creating um, some conflict there at the net, and yet she's still swinging really smart, still swinging high. That's the sign of a mature player, the fact that you don't try to change anything. You just stay with it, stay with it. So many young players, when it's not working for them, when they're not getting the kill, they try to swing harder, try to swing lower, and they end up with the stuff block. But we have not seen that from Logan Eggleston. And Eggleston, keep in mind, is a pretty young player. She graduated early, a year early, out of high school to join this Texas program was a Tennessee Gatorade Player of the Year, a three-time state champion at Brentwood High School. Go Bruins, my alma mater. <laughs> but she has really just kept growing her game year after year, and that's why she's the Big 12 Player of the Year. <laughs> Brian Butler winning that battle with her big time block. And you see here, Penn State is trying to be creative and find ways, new ways, different ways to get Johnny Parker the ball rather than just out at the left pen where they knew she'd have two blockers looking for a one-on-one -on -one down the middle. The set a little high and behind her and just doesn't work in their favor. Four straight points for Texas. Board in the middle. And finally, Texas's defense yields. Give Johnny Parker another kill, but it's the Horde swing that really creates that opportunity. Great job there by Caitlin Horde. 
And we said this was such a unique Penn State team because at times when Johnny Parker is not on absolute fire like she is right now, they really depend on the offense out of their middles. And so it does make ball, import, ball control all that much more important because we need to see balls fed to the middle like we just saw there to Caitlin Hoard. We saw Jared Elliott having a long discussion with the R2, the down official. After that rally ended, Brian Butler turned and looked at the up official and said something too. They weren't happy with a call that wasn't made. Back to Caitlin Hoard. We see the swing isn't there for Logan Eggleston. We've talked about the fact that she's been so low error. She keeps the ball in play. But I think that there's some smarter off-speed shots out there. You know, I think that there are some kills to be had if you're willing to move your off-speed around, be a little bit more mindful of where you're going to place those off-speed balls. Molly Phillips, no, too wide. Annie Kate Fitzpatrick there takes a little chance sending the ball over on first contact there doesn't set up her offense It's a chancy move because it could have been a free ball opportunity for Texas, but they're not able to convert Now it's three straight points for Penn State Is there a touch yes Set point, the, Texas. I believe it's the line judge on the Texas side of the net that sees that touch there off of the Logan Eggleston swing. And as we have said, Logan Eggleston continues to be errorless. So impressive. So Russ Rose has pulled the challenge card. There was a call touch originally on this ball. So this is the second challenge that Penn State has used they will have one remaining unless we go to a fifth set they'll get an additional challenge so we've got johnny parker and caitlin horde up there at the net against logan eggleston you see that swing johnny parker looks like she's too wide i believe i'm thinking if look there is at, a touch here Ford's it would finger. be caitlin horde's right hand yeah, it's hard to say because even move. on her way up i feel like her her, her fingers are already in a pointed backward position even before the ball gets to her like right here it already appears as though those fingers are pointed back so this one is extremely difficult this is always the worst to try to look at <sighs> oh maybe Ooh. on the left hand actually i was yeah. looking at the right hand i'm wondering that's if it's a the great left hand look. wow that's a great look from our crew that makes it look like she did touch there was a touch on that ball and you can also take a look at the trajectory of the ball after it hits Caitlin Hoard to see if the spin of the ball changes at all, Courtney. And we would need indisputable evidence, of course, to overturn the call that's been made. And remember, the call on the floor is a touch on Penn State. So Kevin Windlebow Wendelb has seen enough. He will go back across the court. And it will be a touch on the ball. They're going to confirm that call that there was a touch. Set point, Texas. And Coach Rose will be one for two now in the use of his challenges. One remaining for Penn State. I still think that set could be higher to Horde. They go back to her. And Johnny Parker, an attacking error, gives set number two to Texas. We will at least play four sets in this regional semifinal. Texas takes set number two, 25 to 18. We are tied up at one set apiece.
Man, Omaha, Nebraska is popping this week because they've got the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship Regional Semifinal, Texas and Penn State. We are at least playing four sets in this one. And Texas looked a lot different in that second set thanks to Logan Eggleston. She's got nine kills this afternoon. Yes, yeah, she has been so low error, actually no error to be exact at this point in the match, but she's starting to find her groove offensively with the kills to show for it near, here after set two now. Nine kills on the match. Her counterpart, Skylar Fields, has matched that with nine kills of her own. So Texas, just a machine from the left side right now. Yeah, and it's been fun to watch this battle between her and Johnny Parker, who has 15 kills, hitting 310. By the way, the rest of Penn State hitting just 153 as a team. Meanwhile, Parker, you see her numbers at 310 right there. Nothing new for Johnny Parker, who's pretty used to carrying a heavier load for these Nittany Lions, and she does it well. She just looks so smooth. Looks like the veteran that she is right now in this match. And of course, Eggleston looking like a veteran as well as these two both try to will their teams out of this regional semifinal match as they push to be part of that remaining eight teams in the tournament. Penn State is looking for its 19th regional final appearance. It would be the 25th regional final appearance for Texas if they can make it. Winner gets Nebraska tomorrow. And it's almost hard to believe these teams have not played since 2013, Courtney, when you think of just about how much volleyball history and magic there is between these two programs. Yeah, Texas won that last meeting in five sets. And it's an ace to start off set number three for Serena Gray. So hard to do after a stop and play. Step back to the service line and put a really tough ball in play. It's exactly what Serena Gray does. Penn State has five aces compared to just one for Texas. Grazes the tape. Kudryashova from the left side. And that's exactly what Penn State needs from Kudryashova, her length. It's the high swing deep into the court, just a different look, challenging the blockers, high hands, which she does, forces Texas to have to make a play defensively. And a yellow card has been issued to Texas. So a warning for Jarrett Elliott and the bench. Kill by Molly Phillips. Texas is on the board. Wow, Molly Phillips coming up big right there. Definitely making something out of nothing as again, Penn State challenges O'Brien there on the pass, making her make a move to her left. Really look like an out of system play. I don't know how Molly O'Brien O'Brien is able to do, or excuse me, Molly Phillips is able to do something with that one. And then they come back and they get a block. O'Neill and Phillips teaming up. Phillips only a sophomore, they're 15 and white, and yet she's just so versatile for this team, is trained at middle blocker, so obviously provides a great right side block for them. Attacking error for Eggleston, that is her first attacking error tonight. And credit Penn State for a good block. You know, unfortunately, that does go for an error against Eggleston, but it took an elite block to make it happen. She doesn't just swing and hit a ball out of bounds. But I really like the off speed by Johnny Parker, her choice of where she placed it, because she made Texas's setter play the first ball. That's what creates that awkward look there for Olga Eggleston, the fact that their setter wasn't able to get hands on the ball. And that time, much better, even though Jenna Gabriel had to bump set it behind her. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, really nice job there by Avis, who has just been so disciplined in her swings. As we've mentioned, Penn State doing a good job getting some some soft touches on those, slowing her ball down, and she just continues to battle, but she hasn't allowed that to shake her one bit. I'm just so impressed with her composure. To have only one error, here we are in set three. She has double-digit kills, hitting 321 from that left pin. Really impressive. Yeah, take it, 28 swings. Good dig by Eggleston. Net violation on Penn State. And that rally never swung Penn State's way. Early on, Kudria Shera for, forced to pass a ball. That is not what they want by design. She's forced to set a ball at some point in that rally. Also not what they want by design. They could just never quite turn the table and get control of the ball during that long rally. Morgan O'Brien at the Libero. Eggleston's swing ricochets across the court. And I think the reason we see that big ricochet off the block is because Texas goes with some tempo this time. The placement and the speed of the set here by Jenna Gabriel, and it just leaves the defense chasing the block about a half a step late, and that's why you get the big ricochet. The block on its way up causes the ricochet. Texas has already taken a swing at the ball at that point. Caitlin Hoard finds some room on the back row. Hoard does a really good job running offense in that zone that's midway between the middle of the court and the left front of the court. So she causes the middle blocker for Texas to have to make a move to block. She's not running right at Texas's middle blocker, who right now is Asia O'Neill, a really good blocker, by the way. So doing a good, good job being creative with her offense and forcing that Texas block to at least have to make a move. Free ball back to Texas. Eggleston block, Johnny Parker. Great job by Johnny Parker. Again, Texas going for tempo on both of these sets outside to Eggleston, but they're drifting off the net. So she's getting there fast and the ball is behind her. It's a really hard ball for Eggleston to take a swing at. If you're gonna set it that fast, your hope is to beat the block. Keep it out in front of Eggleston and let her take a nice hard work at it. They try the other pin, O'Neal off the slide, her eighth kill. And that's how you execute a slide. This is just textbook by Asia O'Neal. You see, she loads in the middle, allows the setter to release it, and then she chases. So she is going at full speed, doesn't, she's patient, doesn't take off before the ball is set. Just absolute textbook. Have to say, oh, I love 12. the way these excuse me, Penn State uh, middle back players are picking up so many off-speed balls at a middle back. Really impressive. Tied up at six, Penn State rallied to win the first set, then Texas handily won the second set 25 to 18. Brian on the back row. Yeah, fantastic job of just extending plays. You know, when they talk about wanting to be scrappy defensively, obviously that's going to have to start with your Libro, and Morgan O'Brien is making that happen. Fitzpatrick. Some goes to Serena Gray. Love the choice of the middle in transition here. That is when the middle can be so effective. When that defense is about a half a step behind, doesn't have time to catch up with the play, and all of a sudden, here that ball is. It's coming at you from a different angle than what you're used to, from a different height than what you're used to when it's Serena Gray on the opposite side of the net. Fields in a 
has just been back and forth here in set number three. Skyler Fields with 11 kills now as she goes step for step with Logan Eggleston. They're two outsides really leading the way, but Skyler Fields hitting over 400 right now. Texas is hitting 354 in the match. Service error. Seven service errors now for the Longhorns. Twelve combined service errors between these two teams. And of course, Penn State with the five aces to only Texas's one. So Penn State getting a little more for their money from the service line. And Molly Phillips taking a swing from the left side. That is a tough serve, too, and Texas was able to get a nice pass on it. Molly, we said she's trained in the middle. She's swinging from the right side for Texas. Here we go, set her on the left side and serve received. No problem, Molly Phillips comes through with a big time swing. They've tried some different lineups this season. We didn't see Molly Phillips in that game against Rice, but then she earned that spot back. She has such a high volleyball IQ that has set her apart. And a touch on this ball gives the point to Penn State. That's Kudria Shova now. She has four kills in this match. Excuse me, five for Anastasia Kudryashova, and it's Annie Kate Fitzpatrick who has four. So the outsides for Penn State right now are combining for nine kills. The outsides for Texas right now combine for 22. So a big difference in style of play. Play on both sides of the net, though, has elevated as this match has gone on. Brian Butler right down the middle, and good things happen when you can find your middle in transition, when the play is coming at you so quickly. If you have middle blockers who are willing to work really hard to get off the net after they make their blocking move and to be available in transition, it doesn't even have to be perfect. It might not always be pretty, but if you have middle blockers who transition hard every time, there are points to be had there. Tied again. Neither team has led by more than two points in this set. Caitlin Horde, we talked about the middle matchup in this one, and you can see by the reaction from Horde that she knows that's a big block against Asia O'Neill as these players are just battling back and forth. Swing is long, there is no touch, point for Texas. And that was Johnny Parker that time out there at the left pin. Hoping she can get some hands going up high there, but not able to find any fingers. Playing at least four sets in this match. We're even at a set apiece. Peterson. And it allows Eggleston to swipe it off the block. There's a really smart play by Eggleston as she has that block right in front of her. You see the hustle there to make it even possible, the hustle out of Texas to make that possible. But then it's Eggleston who has to come inside and get it, and she wisely turns on it and pushes it off those blockers' hands. Caitlin Ward up to six kills now as Penn State connecting with the middles pretty well. And Johnny Parker has been so effective for Penn State, but boy, if they can get Horde going and start to get a little bit more offense out of their middles, watch out, because Nittany Lions will be right back in the second set. Block was ready for the tip, Caitlin Horde all over it. That's it, it was all Johnny Parker in sets one and two, but Caitlin Horde coming to life here in set three with the offense and now the defense the extra hang time as she taps that one right back at texas cover, cover. 
Eggleston a little more power behind that swing. Fitzpatrick on the opposite pin over on the left side from where Eggleston swung. And at five foot 11, only a freshman, you know, Penn State can't overset Annie Kate Fitzpatrick and put her in difficult situations against this big physical Texas block. But they're using her correctly, not overusing her, giving her some good in-system looks, and what a smart swing off of that big Texas block. Back and forth, back and forth, <laughs> Asia O'Neill. When Texas is in system, Asia O'Neill makes that slide look so easy. And right now, it's been pretty much undefendable by Penn State. Serve is long for Eggleston. And you see Belinovich there from Penn State pointing at Jenna ha Hampton because the you know, sometimes the best pass is the no pass and the decision not to make a play on that ball. It was Jenna Hampton calling Belinovich off the ball, telling her, let it go, let it go. Realize an error from the service line is a point for the other team. So big play there. Yeah, Eggleston now has four service errors, having trouble getting that serve in play. I think the whole you have to win by two is going to come into play because we just go one point on each side, back and forth. It is feeling that way for sure. Nine service errors. And Penn State is the first to 15, the closest set we have seen. They only lead by one. This is some tournament type volleyball right now. 11 ties here in the third set. Penn State up by one. Still some great performances on both sides of the net. Both of these teams looking to make it to the regional final tomorrow. Johnny Parker leading all attackers on both sides with 15 kills. Yeah, and then you see those pin players for Texas there, Logan Eggleston and Skyler Fields, both swinging from the left side, have 12 kills apiece. Interestingly for Penn State, a very different version of volleyball is their leaders are from the middle and the right side, and they use their left sides much more sparingly. This is an offense that is reliant on ball control because they've got to work balls to the middle and, of course, find Johnny Parker all over the court. And there's Skylar Field, speaking of which, she's now at 13 kills. The longest run in this set by either team is three points in a row, and that was by Penn State. Texas with back-to-back -back missed serves. We'll see if Jenna Gabriel can put one in bounds here. Fitzpatrick again. <laughs> Brian Butler misses. It's the right choice. It's a great look. Love the set there from Jenna Gabriel. Just slightly wide on the part of Brian Butler. Did everything right, just not the result they were looking for. Brian Butler, seven, excuse me, four kills, hitting 375 with three blocks. And there's Fields on the right. Fields going to get a touch there at the net which is going to save that one for Texas. In this current set, Texas with five attacking errors, Penn State only three, and then, of course, we've seen several errors from the service line from Texas in this set as well. Free ball back to the Longhorns. Penn State's block is on it. 
Wow, and this is a point that Texas would like to have back because the miscommunication creates a free ball opportunity for Texas. This is a must-have here. And the Penn State block just responds with a wall at the net. Both of these teams top 10, top seven in the nation in blocks per set. Penn State winning that battle nine to six team blocks. Ooh, quick shot down the line from Eggleston. And that's in perfect rhythm that time. We talked about the tempo of the set to Eggleston getting a little quicker as this match has gone on. A few times it drifted behind her, so they didn't quite have the connection. The connection is absolutely on point that time. Great delivery from Jenna Gabriel. It's been somebody different stepping up in every set, and Caitlin Horde has been a difference maker for Penn State here. There is no defense for that high-flying middle blocker who has the snap of the wrist and the ability to place it deep in the corners. Good luck playing that one. Logan Eggleston with a little something extra here on this trip across the front row as she's just trying to breathe some life, extra life into this Longhorn team and will them to another set victory here. Caitlin Horde, if they get a good pass, you gotta give it to Caitlin Horde right now. And this is so smart. We saw her go deep in the left back corner moments ago with the flick of the wrist. Well, this time she turns it with her hand with the off speed, the open hand shot, and throws it deep into the right back corner. Ford, a two-time All-American. She was a first-team All-American selection last season, three-time All-Big Ten. pressure from the service line for Penn State. They drop one right in front of the passers. Penn State on top 20 to 18 and Caitlin Horde in the middle. The go-to right now, eight kills hitting over 400. Only one error on the day, but I'll tell you what, it was Johnny Parker early, and you felt like she's going to need some help here against Texas. If Penn State's going to pull this one out, well, guess what? Ford says, I can do that. I can help you a little bit, and she has come to life. It comes along with ball control, though. You have to realize that because Penn State really needs offense out of their middles, has to start with good ball control. So lots of credit to that back court right now for Penn State, making it happen, putting the ball right in the hands of Gabby Blossom, up at the net, where she can find her middles in transition. Of course, Maddie Belinovich, one of those back row players who prior to this stop and play here, this time out, she just had an ace. So the backcourt doing big things right now for Penn State. And you've got to keep in mind this Penn State team is doing all of this after a 26-day break between matches, between the regular season and the NCAA tournament. They don't look like they have missed a beat. I mean, you look at their record on the season, and you see that, you know, they're 10 and 5 coming into the, I mean, just, you know, you think, how, how is that their record? They've barely played any matches. And that was the story of their season. You know, the Big Ten pushes the season back to the spring, and then still several matches canceled for this Penn State group, including their last two series, those against Wisconsin and Nebraska. So this is a team that is still very much a work in progress. Coach Russ Rose said, we've got a couple days here in Omaha trying to get better. I mean, they're coaching right up to the last minute. Let's pay it off. Eggleston finally breaks through. If you don't succeed, try, try again. And Jenna Gabriel gives her that opportunity right back at her. Second swing, she makes it count. Eggleston has four service errors today. How fast did Caitlin Hort get up on that ball? 
But look at the pass here. The last eight servers for Texas have not been able to score a point. So they're hanging in there in terms of their side out game, but they cannot score a point off their serve. They've missed several serves and the, the serves they have put in play. I tell you what, Penn State has been able to pass those and transition that into a quick side out. Service error makes it a one-point game. We're going to 25, and I feel like I gotta say it, especially in this set, you have to win by two. No one able to create separation here. It has been such a high-level side-out game, so it speaks well to the passing and the offense in terms of their side-out, but which team can string together just two points would feel like you've climbed a mountain here. It's Patrick. Fields will get a swing off. And a point for Texas. They call a touch. This is the 15th time we have been tied in this set. And this is exactly what Coach Russ Rose was alluding to when he talked about the fact that, hey, maybe we haven't played a lot of matches, but when we play matches in the Big Ten, we, we play matches that are competitive from point one till the end. And so this is nothing new for Penn State. They're used to battling back and forth. In fact, after dropping that second set 25-18, felt like Texas really had control. And yet Penn State takes the floor. And look at the way they have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with this big physical Texas team here in the third set. They are just right back at them. I really just admire the fight and the intensity of these Nittany Lions. A lot on the line, and both teams know it. Tied at 21 in this third set. So this is how our portion of the bracket looks. This is the bottom left quadrant, if you're looking at the bracket as a whole. Nebraska swept Baylor earlier today. They will get the winner of our match here, either Penn State or Texas. We'll have that match for you tomorrow. And of course, that other slot to be filled by the winner of Ohio State, Florida. So the Big Ten still alive in terms of trying to control this lower left portion of the bracket. Texas and Florida going to see if they can get in the way. This has been the most back and forth set for sure. Take a look at the hitting percentage. Broken down. Both teams really even in this third set. Yeah, interesting that Penn State takes that first set, even though they don't hit for a higher efficiency. So it tells you a little bit about the way they played in set one, the scrappiness, the defense. And then we see the high-level offense we expect from Texas there in that second set with the huge hitting efficiency number. Off of the block goes Annie Kate Fitzpatrick. So smart, only a freshman knows exactly where she's going with that ball. She has been trained to swing off those hands. Does a fantastic job. More pressure by the serve, keeps Texas out of system. And Serena Gray can get in on the action too. It is 23-21 Penn State. Johnny Parker with such a nice piece of work from the service line. You see that one, that bottom drops out of it right in front of the passer. This is gonna be a free ball opportunity. And guess what, Horde has rotated out, but it's Gray into the middle and she doesn't miss a beat for Penn State. Texas calls timeout, trailing by two. Penn State just two points away from taking this set. It's already been an exciting day at the regional semifinals. The first Big Ten team was sent home. Pitt, unseeded, defeats Minnesota, who was the three seed in five sets. We'll see them in the regional final for the first time in program history. And then, Missy, we got to see Baylor and Nebraska, and Nebraska looked pretty good. 
And they were without Lawrence Difference today. So that's a three set win over Baylor without their superstar. And they still, they still look solid. Tomorrow's a new day, Coach Cook says. So we'll see if Lawrence Difference is with them tomorrow. Of course, 14 of the 16 teams in this round who advanced were the seeded teams. Pitt was one of those unseeded teams. And not only did they advance to this round, they won this round. So that is huge for the Pitt Panthers. Yeah, as you mentioned it, we're not sure if we will see Lauren Stiverance tomorrow in the regional final for Nebraska. Obviously, she is a big piece of their offense in the middle. And Penn State just focused on this set right here. Two more points, and they take a two to one lead in the match. Texas out of system again. Fitzpatrick. of pressure on Annie Kate Fitzpatrick that time as Penn State just not a lot of other options they have to keep setting the left pin keep setting the left pin keep setting the left pin would have been nice there if they could have thrown a ball behind maybe Johnny Parker out of the right back but just didn't have options couldn't get their middle blocker involved there in transition because of she was losing her transition route the way the ball was being played up in the middle of the court and then with their setter in the front row there is not a right side attack so the other option of course is Johnny Parker at her right back but they just couldn't find a rhythm three balls to Annie Kate Fitzpatrick she's able to work around that big block twice and then finally they get the best of her so Serena Gray is adjusting her ankle brace on her shoe And while she does that, Jenna Gabriel will have some extended time to think about putting this next ball in bounds, a very important one. Johnny Parker wanted a touch, did not get it. And we're tied at 23. We just set a lot of pressure on Fitzpatrick there in left front. How do they help her? They find Johnny Parker out of the back row. It was a nice, clean look. Serena Gray, it's set point Penn State. And you could hear them saying, hang it, hang it. It's a, it's a pass right at the center. Ricochet's right at the center. She's not going to be able to run a tempo play out of, the, out of the middle there. But I just love the fact that she still sets the ball up for Serena Gray. You know, what's wrong with the slow tempo out of the middle when you've got an athlete like Serena Gray? Hang it up and let her go get it. Annie Kate Fitzpatrick with set point. Fields. Parker, Parker hustling. Play. Wow. But they can't get it back over tied at 24. Remember, you have to win by two. I didn't know if there was any chance Johnny Parker could make a play on that ball. So impressed that they even got a second contact, even a third contact, just not able to send it back over the net. As long as you keep one foot on the playing surface, you're good to go. Yosia puts it in play. Eggleston at set point, Texas. Great job capitalizing there by the Longhorns. They get Penn State completely out of system. Not a good swing by the Nittany Lions, and the Longhorns know they have an opportunity. Great job capitalizing on that opportunity. Eggleston, the one here who plays the ball up. 
pretty simple pass. She does a good job taking care of business, and I, Jenna Gabriel gives it right back to her. Give and go, and it's a point for Logan Eggleston. We'll have another Monday night NBA doubleheader for you on ESPN and the app. Steph and the Warriors are in Philly to take on Joel Embiid and the Sixers at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's out to Staples Center for a battle of the big. Rudy Gobert leads the Jazz against the Lakers. Our coverage starts with Stephen A's pregame Sports Center at 7. We've got an NBA connection here. Asia O'Neal, of course, Playing for Texas, her dad, Jermaine O'Neal, was a six-time NBA All-Star. Right now, Texas has set point. This has been a wild third set. I mean, the, the challenge is going to be stringing back-to-back -back points together because neither team has done a good job of that in this set. Yeah, that serve pass battle you saw there, Penn State certainly leading the way in terms of a number of the aces. I also feel like Penn State leading the way in terms of just creating more stress from the service line. Several times they've served the sideline passer off of their center line of their body and they're spraying those balls just a little bit for Texas, keeping the Longhorns out of system. And yet Texas right here with Penn State, I think speaks to just how big and physical they are, how hard they are to overcome. First set point for Texas. Milani Osia behind the service line. And Blossom goes to the middle. Kudrigas Shova. Tied at 25. What a great choice there by Kudrigas Shova. Doesn't try to do too much with it. And yet it's a very nice placement of the off speed. You know, she's in a tough situation. She doesn't just pop a ball into the middle of the court. She's very aware of where the defense is. Places one right over the block on the sideline. Eggleston. And Texas ran into each other a miscommunication second set point for Penn State Courtney we've talked all day about the matchup of Eggleston and Johnny Parker up at the net but guess what that time the huge swing by Eggleston and it's Johnny Parker back there who digs that ball up these two are gonna fall asleep tonight thinking about each other there by Jenna Gabriel absolutely not afraid there in a must-have situation to send it behind to her sophomore Phillips and then Phillips doesn't just take the easy angle swing does a really nice job getting her feet to the ball and gives herself that line swing an ace for Texas they have their second set point and O'Brien, who's had to be back there passing the tough serves all night long for Texas. This time, she doesn't feel the pressure. She's applying the pressure from the service line. Ford with the tip. Help coming from left front there. Eggleston sliding over to help block in the middle. Horde says, well, that must leave a little opening in left front. And she just places it so nicely. Our 20th tie of the set. Courtney, wasn't it you that said we should probably tell them you have to win by two? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we saw it coming. <laughs> Off the block. Set point number three for Texas. Great communication there by Texas as well. As you see, a 12 there in white pointed to her teammates. Caught, they called her off that ball. She was sliding on her knees over there. She was in position to make a play on it, but great communication to hold her off. Pass tight. They still get it to Horde. 
to Eggleston. Garcia again after a big dig. Johnny Parker on the attack. Yosia is all over it right now for Texas. It was touched. Point Penn State. Wow. What a rally. And Johnny Parker finally with that huge rip out of the left front. That's maybe when you're glad that the Texas blockers are as big as they are. Because you know those hands have got to be up there somewhere. If you can just find them and Johnny Parker is able to find them. Timing off, but it didn't matter. Asia O'Neal made it work. Texas has its fourth set point. Jenna Gabriel taking a peek at the middle blocker there before she set that ball to Asia O'Neal. She was going to check and see where that Penn State middle was headed, doing everything she can to give her, sit her hitters one-on-one -on -one opportunities, trying to set away from that Penn State block. That time, Caitlin Ward up there at the net. Set three, but Texas wins it 30 to 28. It took extra innings, and I don't know if I would say either of these teams ever flinched. It was just finally Texas who was able to get that two point lead. What a third set. That is not a typo. That is the score in the third set. 30 to 28. Texas prevails. They lead this match two sets to one. Asia O'Neill had a nice third set. She's got 10 kill kills tonight. 10 kills and hitting 500. So she's doing it very efficiently, and it's typically happening behind the setter, just like this. And we've seen her execute the slide perfectly over and over and over again. Sometimes you know where the ball is going. The question is, can you stop it? As she taps one in right there for one of her 10 kills, just three blocks to go along with it today. You see those numbers, Missy, and you think about what Asia O'Neill was doing this time last year. It's incredible. This time last year, she was a few months removed from her second open heart surgery. She was born with a heart murmur and some leakage, and they went back in for a second time back in January of 2020. The first time was when she was 13 years old. The good news is they don't think that she will have to do that again. She said she felt like a totally different person walking away from that. So much more stamina and injury, and here she is playing in the NCAA championship just a little over a year after that. Yeah, interesting, Courtney. You asked Coach Elliott about how hard was it for her to return, and he said, actually, she felt amazing. It was like it's like she got a new car. You know, I mean, he just said it was like a brand new car, brand new body. You know, the, her oxygen levels, you know, he didn't know all the terminology, obviously, but not exactly where they needed to be. And so for her, she just felt like a new person. But he said, you know, the way that she handles herself, he said the amazing thing is that you really wouldn't even know anything was going on. And he said that's such a testament to her family and the way that, you know, that they've handled things. And just, wow, what a mature young lady she is. She has been a huge reason for Texas's success this season, and she has really helped them here in this tough match. That third set, 21 ties. The largest lead for either team was two. And it took that two-point lead to end it. And you wonder, how do you respond from that? After playing a set like that, where it's so back and forth, you go extra points. How does Penn State regroup here into a must-win set four? You know, any other team, nearly any other team in this tournament, I would say I feel like that's got to take some serious wind out of your sails. But for some reason, I don't see it impacting Penn State that way. This is a tough, gritty, hard-nosed Penn State team. I think they're right back out there, pick up where they left off. Molly Phillips will start off set four with a kill. If Texas wins this set, they are moving on to the regional final to face Nebraska tomorrow. Phillips on the right side, just one more wrinkle in this high-powered offense. One more thing for Penn State to think about, and she's been really successful, so I like getting her involved early here in this fourth set.
Fitzpatrick out of the back row. And Johnny Parker on the left side. And talk about picking up where you left off. That's what Johnny Parker's doing for sure because she has led the way all day for the Nittany Lions. She is nearing 20 kills at this point. She's not just leading Penn State. She's leading all players in the match. Yeah, Parker and Eggleston. Ironically, we've been watching that matchup. Eggleston also has 17 kills, just like Johnny Parker. Until now that she has 18 <laughs> kills. <laughs> and so we can fully expect Johnny Parker to come back here with a kill of her own. How fun has that matchup been to watch? I mean, right from the start. Yeah. An ace for Morgan O'Brien. And I tell you, it's been a bit of a struggle from the service line for Texas, but it was O'Brien who had a huge ace there late in the fourth set, and she continues to look strong here in this one. Excuse me, in the third, yes, in the fourth set. Good take by Gabriel. Wait. Yosia has been called on to set a lot. She has done such a good job as a defensive specialist on the back row number 12 in white. Defense to offense. What about this, though? An assist to go along with her defense. That's a big-time kill by Logan Eggleston there. And Johnny Parker off balance. Trent's trying to put that ball in play. Five to one. Texas starting set four. Yeah, really difficult play there for Johnny Parker. She's literally backing up as she tries to make a play on that ball. And back to Horde, thumps it. And here it is, that middle blocker transition play. Look at Horde, she gets off just far enough to get a foot on that three meter line. It's so important, after the block, she's immediately pushing off the net, getting to the three meter line so she has a full approach. And she takes a deep breath right there and rightfully so, she is working really hard. That is constant movement for the middles mm -hmm. to work so hard to be available. And the timing just not there. We saw that time Gabby Blossom off the net just a little bit as she's moving out toward the three meter line. And I'll tell you though, for Penn State to be successful, there is an element of needing to push the middle. That's where their offense, you know, is gonna come from if it's not coming from Johnny Parker. And so you're gonna have a few misses there. If I'm Gabby Blossom, don't shy away, go right back to it. Penn State's middles had no attacking errors in their second round match. Both hit over 700. Ooh, Eggleston. Wow, Eggleston has not had a lot of one-on-one -on -one opportunities in this one. But that time, you see Serena Gray gets held up there with the front row setter trying to defend first, and that gives Eggleston an all-clear to swing away. Penn State will call a timeout after that big-time swing from Logan Eggleston. Fourth set here in Omaha in the round of 16. Texas has come out with the momentum after winning that marathon of a third set, 30 to 28. I think earlier I called the third set the fourth set, Courtney, because it felt like two sets. But it was actually all the third set, and now we're in the fourth. I've questioned myself several times as to what set we're in. <laughs> <laughs> You can never count this Penn State team out, though. I mean, we have seen their energy, their resilience. Back in the first set, they were trailing 22 to 19. Came back and won, ended on a six to one run. Oh, 
And so Swing Asia O'Neill is human. I think for the first time <laughs> she has missed on the slide. She has been perfect, I think, behind the setter. One miss now for Asia O'Neill, who has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, she's one of three players for Texas right now with double figure kills. Eggleston leading the way with 20. Eggleston has been really successful on that sharp angle here in this fourth set. It seemed like she was kind of finding something she likes there, but that time, not enough court. She runs out of room wide on the swing. Take by Bilinovic. It's long from Fitzpatrick. Twice Texas was in a one option situation off of the serve and in transition. Their only option was Logan, Egg Logan Eggleston on the outside. So she had that Penn State defense ready and waiting on her. Two really smart swings. Doesn't try to do too much in a bad situation. Just keeps her team in that rally. And over the course of a long rally, what happens? You get an error from Penn State. Missy, she has taken 59 swings in this match. Yeah, I think it just speaks to how much this Texas team trusts her in their out-of-system situations. She is so good at a system because of the fact that she, she just trusts her team around her right now. Only four errors. I just love the fact that she's prolonging rallies. And I think that's something that Texas has really worked on this year. Like, let's trust our defense. Let's be scrappy across the back row. Let's, be, let's not be afraid to prolong a rally. We can win the long rallies, not the just first swing kill rallies. into the net. Haven't seen a lot of offense from either of these setters. This is a huge block that you're dealing with at the net. And both of these setters a little smaller. Gabby Blossom at 5'9", Jenna Gabriel of Texas at 5'8". That time Blossom tries, but it's really the net that got in her way. It's Patrick doubled by Peterson. Asia O'Neill behind the setter once again. Texas has their largest lead now in this set, and it's going to come off of yet another slide by Asia O'Neill, who just runs this so perfectly because she has the opportunity to cut it off at any point. Courtney, she goes, she chases it, she allows the setter to set the ball, she runs parallel to the net, and then when she cuts that ball off, she has the sharp angle, she has the line shot. It's so hard for the block to defend that ball, and then try playing defense behind a floating block that's frustrated our ready by that Asia O'Neill attack. Fifth service error for Logan Eggleston. Yeah, if there's anywhere that she could perhaps improve her game over the course of this match, it would just be from the service line where she's been really spotty back there. But wow, in terms of her offense, you can't ask for much more. Yeah, 20 kills on 59 swings. Her season high is 60 swings in one of those Baylor matches. Skyler Fields. Wow, that's a special swing. You don't see that a lot. I mean, on the outside, she turns on this ball down the line. And she's so high. She's just on top of the ball when she contacts it. And you see it, it lands just beyond the three meter line. She gets on top of the ball so well. And the tip's gonna work for Kudryashova. 
It's a really smart time to use the tip play because anytime the opposing team's middle blocker has gone back to serve, they're probably going to play defense for that half of a rotation. That was Asia O'Neill back there. They don't practice a lot of defense. Middle blockers have a lot of other things on their plate. They don't practice a lot of backcourt defense, that is. And so a great opportunity for Kudryashova just to be aware of the personnel on the court and use that to her advantage. Love it. Butler jumped, and that left room for Skyler Fields to go all out. Wow. You see Breon Butler comes in hard there. They're thinking maybe they're going to run that middle attack, but just one blocker on the outside that time, and that's not going to do it against the block, against the swing coming from Fields. Kudria Shova finding some ways to get points on the board right now for Penn State. And when these setters are able to create some easy looks, you see just how dynamic these attackers are. But all night long, they've been battling the big block of both teams, really. I mean, we talked about it coming into this one. These are two tremendous middle blocker duos in the game of college volleyball. And we have all four of them on display right here. Yeah, and both of these teams, top seven in the nation in blocks per set. Yeah. Skylar Fields has the hot hand. Somebody different, every set stepping up. Yes, she does, and I feel we've said that about Penn State. We've said it about Texas as well. It speaks to the depth of these rosters, that over the course of the match, there are moments where different players have really been shining for their respective teams. Right now, it's fields shining bright. You'll see ya. She has that, been that player setting the tone on the back row with her serve, with her hustle, with her ability to set the out-of-system ball when Jenna Gabriel's been taken out of the play. Yeah, super impressed with how she has complimented the play of Morgan O'Brien in the Libero jersey. She has been so solid across the backcourt. There she steps in again to bump set Eggleston, but it's an attacking error. Just the fifth attacking error today on 60 swings for Eggleston. Penn State has to win this set to extend the match. Talk about staying with it. How about Johnny Parker floating outside the antenna there? Looks like her back is up against the wall. She just finds a way there to score that point. Really nice job. Ooh, Breon Butler. Ooh. Yeah, in case you forgot about Breon Butler. She doesn't have necessarily an exceedingly high number of kills in this one, but when she's gotten a kill, I feel like they've kind of had an exclamation point on them. She's had some, she's had some momentum type swings, big swings that can create a lot of momentum for her team. But she also is that threat in the middle that the blockers on the other side of the net have to respect. So she's contributed in that way. You may not see it as a point on her stat line, but because they're afraid of what she can do in the middle. It opens up things on the pins a little more. Yeah, you better believe that Fields and Eggleston are thankful for her being there in the middle when they're on the outside drawing that attention away from their attack. Eggleston's up to 21 kills on a season high number of swings at 62. And doesn't it just look like another day at the office for her? Just like, yeah, I do this every day. I mean, she's just calm, cool, collected. Shoves 
gives it in the block. Eggleston is just always that happy-go-lucky person, always has that positive attitude no matter what's going on, whether she's taking 62 swings or she's had a couple of errors back-to-back. -back. Yeah, so important for a player in her role, and her role being the out-of-system go-to player, because you're going to swing at a lot of junk balls, the balls that are in bad situations, that you have to be able to sort of shake that off, and Eggleston certainly has a great demeanor for that. I remember Jared Elliott telling us that when Logan first got to his Texas program, she was had, there were no bad days. So much so, he called her parents and said, is this, like, is she actually okay? Or is she just, and they said, no, that's just how Logan is. Wow, wouldn't you want to recruit a team full of those? That's gotta yes. be every coach's dream. <laughs> And let's take another look at the Asia O'Neill slide. Here she goes again, only one block able to get to that for Penn State because of course they also have to be concerned about defending the opposite side of the net for Texas. And that's Texas's strength is the depth of its offense. They're, fall, they're calling, was it four contacts on Texas? So Logan Eggleston, who is the captain on the floor, is over talking to the up official. She's the only one can, who can approach the stand. If you want to know how important the block at the net is as the first line of defense, again, we're in a situation here where Texas has taken their setter off their starting setter momentarily off the floor during that past rally to get a bigger block at the net. That is how important that first line of defense is, even if it's not a stuff block. You gotta get those hands up there. You're looking for a touch block, anything to slow down the big attack. So Jarrett Elliott has challenged this the first time that Texas has used a challenge tonight. They originally awarded the point to Penn State, so we're looking for a touch on this. So our setter touched it, and then our also touched it, and I hit it over. Correct. Okay, yeah. This one, that's, like, that's, the, that's the part we are challenging. So they had called four contacts, so I think Logan Eggleston was trying to clarify with the down official what they wanted them to look at. Yeah, she had a really specific moment in that rally, hoping to help the officials as she sort of zeroes in on where they are challenging. And you see there the official as he's <laughs> trying to roll to the correct moment in play. So you heard a little bit of that. We'll wait to get the official call. So they're going to replay this point because they stopped play because they called four contacts. By video review, he looked and saw that it was only three contacts, so they'll have to replay the point. Absolutely, because the ball was blown dead. You don't reverse the call or award a point to anyone, but they will have the opportunity to replay that long rally. And now Penn State gets their chance to talk to the up official and Logan Eggleston says, let me make sure I make my way over here. Yeah. <laughs> Get an ear in on this conversation and make sure no one changes their mind. Yeah, and you see Gabby Blossom is the floor captain for Penn State. She's the one that can approach that stand for the Nittany Lions. All right, so we will replay this point. We will replay it. Last night, That's a net violation on Texas. Wow, and you wondered if that swing was gonna go long. Texas decided to make a play on it anyway, perhaps because there was a touch, perhaps because they saw a touch up there at the net. 
but they actually draw the blocker into the net. Johnny Parker with that big swing, they're not doing everything they can to try to slow it down, and it's gonna result in a net violation. Bump set coming to Fields. Texas hits 20 points. A little bit of a bing bang play at the net and as Penn State drops down, they're not able to just make a clean first contact and get control of that rally. We want to welcome those of you watching on ESPN2. Courtney Lyle and Missy Whittemore with you. Texas needs five more points to advance to the regional final where they would face Nebraska tomorrow. Jenna Great Gabriel will go to Skyler Fields. And there's a point for Texas. Jenna Gabriel doing a really nice job shoving this ball all the way out there to the antenna, which allows Skylar Fields to turn on it and get that shot down the line. Very aware of the fact that Gabby Blossom, the setter, in the front row right now for Penn State. Typically a huge block in every rotation. So if they've got the setter up there, they know they got to take advantage of that. It has been a great match so far in this one. The third set was a marathon. Texas ended up winning 30 to 28. We saw 21 ties in set three, and the largest lead was two points. But Texas really carried that momentum over, and they have dominated this fourth set. Yeah, and interestingly, we saw Texas sort of there in set two come out with a pretty dominant performance, but Penn State just right back at them in set three. So you had hoped that maybe Penn State could match that play here in the fourth set, but again, it looks like Texas sort of breaking this one open. However, from what we've seen so far today, do not count Penn State out. They have battled in this one. Well, Texas has two players with 20 or more kills, and one of those is Skylar Fields. Skylar Fields out there at the left pin. She was the freshman of the year a season ago in the Big 12. This year swinging from the left side, so a little bit more asked of her offensively, and she has answered the call. She is high, she hangs, she's got great range, knows how to swing off those hands, and she is just using the entire court so far here today. That is a career high for Skylar Fields, her 20 kills. And get this, Missy, she is the first player for Texas this season outside of Logan Eggleston to record 20 kills in a match. Wow, impressive. These left sides for Texas have been so good. And I'm so impressed, not with just their kill numbers, but their efficiency, how low air they have been from the left pin. And as we pointed out earlier, such a different story for Penn State in terms of their style of offense when their leading kill getters are Johnny Parker from the right side and Caitlin Horde out of the middle. So it puts a lot of pressure on the Nittany Lions in transition, knowing that they have to really control the ball to feed the middle on the right side. Texas was eliminated in this round of the tournament last year. Upset. They were the number two seed. And Louisville upset them on their home court. <laughs> Service error. About as close as you can get, but great communication there between that time it was Sydney Peterson and Logan Eggleston. Server does a good job of trying to split the passers there, but a really nice job of communicating that ball out of bounds. It'll be a bump set to the other side. There's Fields into the block, saved out of the net. Fields readjusts and gets the kill. Really nice ball movement by Fields, who knows that she's swinging into Caitlin Horde. 
Caitlin Hoard gets the block the first time. The second time she's able to turn on it and get through the seam of the block. Texas two points away from the regional final. And back to Caitlin Hoard, who has been very consistent. Just one attacking error this evening, 12 kills. And there it is again. It's the ball control from Penn State allowing them to run the middle. And that's when they're at their best. They don't have a lot of time, though, to play catch up. Because it is match point for Texas. What a luxury there, Phillips on the right side with her length. She creates a great block for Texas, and then here she comes through with a swing. And they get just enough out of her offensively to keep the defense honest. You'll see us serving for the match. Hoard keeps him alive. Second match point, though, for Texas. Ford says not just yet as she continues to power her way through this one. sets the tone and you're thinking well texas respond here and they certainly do turn up a notch offensively we knew they had it in them and they just got better and better as this one went on the first time texas has beaten penn state in the ncaa tournament and it sends them to the regional finals we will see texas nebraska can't wait for that one tomorrow in the regional final. It's going to be a showdown. That one is going to be a whole lot of fun. We talked about the volleyball royalty in this section of the bracket, and those are two teams who continue great tradition in the sport of volleyball. That is going to be a fantastic matchup. Both of those teams have multiple weapons. We saw them on display for Texas today. Logan Eggleston, a match high 22 kills. Skylar Fields, a career high 21 kills for her. Jarrett Elliott and the Texas Longhorns are moving on to the regional final. We will see them tomorrow against Nebraska. They get the win three sets to one over Penn State.